Welcome back to day 124 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. My name is Ebony, and today we will be reading Job chapters 10 through 14. So let's dive into the Word of God. And when we start chapter 10, Job is talking to God. So it reads, I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me, the work of your hands, while smiling on the schemes of the wicked? Are your eyes like those of a human? Do you see things only as people see them? Is your lifetime only as long as ours? Is your life so short that you must quickly probe for my guilt and search for my sin? Although you know I am not guilty, no one can rescue me from your hands. You formed me with your hands. You made me. Yet now you completely destroy me. Remember that you made me from dust. Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh, and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, your true intent, was to watch me, and if I sinned, you would not forgive my guilt. If I am guilty, too bad for me. And even if I'm innocent, I can't hold my head high because I am filled with shame and misery. And if I hold my head high, you will hunt me like a lion and display your awesome power against me. Again and again, you witness against me. You pour out your growing anger on me and bring fresh armies against me. Why then did you deliver me from my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? It would be as though I had never existed, going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone that I may have a moment of comfort before I leave never to return for the land of darkness and, other, and utter gloom. It is a land as dark as midnight, a land of gloom and confusion where even the light is dark as midnight. Amen. So that is the end of Job chapter 10. We see Job crying out to God, you know, once again, you know, you know, saying, you know, God, you created you, me, you formed me, you know, Lord, you see the wicked prospering and yet, you know, they don't have as much trouble as I have. Um, and so, you know, he's just crying out to God and once again, asking God, you know, why did you make me? Why did you create me? Why don't you just let me, let me perish so that I don't have to endure this suffering anymore. So let's go to chapter 11. Then Zophar, the Namathite, replied to Job, shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent just by a lot of talking? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock God, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim my beliefs are pure and I am clean in the sight of God. If only God would speak, if only he would tell you what he thinks, if only he would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, God is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. Can you solve the mysteries of God? Can you discover everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens. And who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If God comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false and he takes note of all their sins. An empty headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer, get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten with innocence. You will be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help, but the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope is death. Amen. So that is the end of chapter 11. We see his friends so far responding to what Job has said thus far, and they're still accusing him and saying that he's guilty, that there's some sin that he must have committed and telling Job that he needs to repent when Job knows that he's innocent. So his friends still don't believe that he's innocent and that these 
um, tragedies have come upon him because of some sin he has committed. So let's see what happens in chapter 12. Then Job spoke again. You people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you're no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me, for I call on God and expect an answer. I am a just and blameless man, yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling, but robbers are left in peace, and those who provoke God live in safety, though God keeps them in his power. Just ask the animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you, for they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of the Lord, for the life of every living thing is in his hand and the breath of every human being. The ear tests the words it hears, just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the age and understanding to the old, but true wisdom and power are found in God. Counsel and understanding are his. What he destroys cannot be rebuilt. When he puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If he holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. If he releases the water, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, stripped of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robe of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waist. He leads priests away, stripped of status. He overthrows those with long years and power. He silences the trusted advisor and removes the insight of the elders. He pours disgrace upon princes and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in darkness. He brings light to the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and he destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. They grope in the darkness without a light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Amen. So that is the end of Job chapter 12. Um, we see Job responding to his friends afar. And he's like, look, who you don't have the keys on wisdom. I know these things. I know that God does all of these things that you have said. Um, and he also continues to maintain his innocence. And he continues to talk about how everyone is in God's hand and God decides what happens to people, the just and the wicked. So let's go to Job chapter 13. Look, I have seen all this with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears. And now I understand. I know as much as you do. You are no better than I am. As for me, I would speak directly to the Almighty. I want to argue my case with God himself. As for you, you smear me with lies. As physicians, you are worthless quacks. If only you could be silent. That's the wisest thing you could do. Listen to my charge. Pay attention to my arguments. Are you defending God with lies? Do you make your dishonest arguments for his sake? Will you slat your testimony in his favor? Will you argue God's case for him? What will happen when he finds out what you are doing? Can you fool him as easily as you fool people? No, you will be in trouble with him if you secretly slant your testimony in his favor. Doesn't his majesty terrify you? Doesn't your fear of him overwhelm you? Your platoons are as valuable as ashes. Your defense is as fragile as a clay pot. Be silent now and leave me alone. Let me speak and I will face the consequences. Why should I put myself in mortal danger and take my life in my own hands? God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I am going to argue my case with him, but this is what will save me. I am not godless. If I were, I could not stand before him. Listen closely to what I am about to say. Hear me out. I have prepared my case. I will be proved innocent. Who can argue with me over this? And if you prove me wrong, I will remain silent and die. O oh God, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. Remove your heavy hand from me, and don't terrify me with your awesome presence. Now summon me, and I will answer. Or let me speak to you, and you reply. Tell me, what have I done wrong? Show me my rebellion and my sin. Why do you turn away from me? Why do you treat me as your enemy? Would you terrify a leaf blown by the wind? Would you chase dry straw? 
you write bitter accusations against me and bring up all the sins of my youth. You put my feet in stocks. You examine all my paths. You trace all my footprints. I waste away like rotting wood, like a moth eaten coat. Amen. So that is the end of Job chapter 13. You know, pretty much Job is telling his friends like, look, y'all need to stop talking because y'all don't know what y'all are talking about. And then he cries out to God and asks God, you know, God, can I come and plead my case for you? Um, God, can I come and plead my case to you, you know, and, and find out what it is that I have done wrong. So let's see what happens in Job chapter 14. How frail is humanity? How short is life? How full of trouble. We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Must you keep an eye on such a frail creature and demand an accounting from me? Who can bring purity out of an impure person? No one. You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live and we are not given a minute longer. So leave us alone and let us rest. We are like hired hands. So let us finish our work in peace. Even a tree has more hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. Though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stump decays, at the scent of water it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling. But when people die, their strength is gone, their breath their last, and then where are they? As water evaporates from a lake and a river disappears in drought, people are laid to rest and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not wake up nor be roused from their sleep. I wish you would hide me in the grave and forget me there until your anger has passed, but mark your calendar to think of me again. Can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all of my years of struggle, and I would eagerly await the release of death. You would call and I would answer, and you would yearn for me, your handiwork, for then you would guard my steps instead of watching for my sins. My sins would be sealed in a pouch and you would cover my guilt. But instead, as mountains fall and crumble and as rocks fall from a cliff, as water wears away the stones and floods wash away the soil, so you destroy people's hope. You always overpower them and they pass from the scene. You disfigure them in death and send them away. They never know if their children grow up in honor or sink to insignificance. They suffer painfully. Their life is full of trouble. Amen. So Job is continuing to talk to God and, you know, he's just crying out to God and, you know, talking about, you know, the, the unfairness of life and how fragile humanity is. And, you know, and he's, he's like, you know, God, I don't have any hope. Um, if only there was hope for me, if only I knew, you know, that when I pass that I would rise up again, which praise God, we know that through Jesus Christ, that as believers in Christ, when we pass, we know that we're going to go and be with the Father. But at this point, Job doesn't know this. He does, Jesus hasn't come yet. So he doesn't know, you know, what happens when he passes. So he's, he's longing for that hope, you know, because then he'd be like, you know, if I die, that's okay. But all right, that is the end of day 124 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I hope that you are continuing to enjoy the reading of the book of Job and his discussion between his friends and with God. All right, that is the end of day 124 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that you are blessed by this reading. And don't forget to check out the reflection questions in the discussion section of the video. Also, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notifications for day 125 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. All right, everyone, have a blessed day. Bye.